brought to you by Form Systems, the leader in API and cloud gateway technology. This, in this 45-minute uh, tutorial, I want to switch gears a little bit because um, I'm actually not such a big fan of, of, of GUIs. Um, I like to do everything um, on the command line, at least to the point where it's, where it's practical. Um, uh, I'm very much um, uh, a proponent of, of using whichever tool is most appropriate for the task. And whatever you're already uh, used to, whether that's Python or R, or you do everything um, using Spark already, I think that um, also knowing how to leverage uh, the power of the command line uh, can make you a more productive and efficient uh, data scientist. So in, in this, in this uh, tutorial, I'm going to be focusing on predicting uh, from the command line. So, so I want to thank uh, the organizers uh, for inviting me here. Um, it's, it's all, it, the, the reason um, I guess I'm standing here now is because um, this book that I wrote, which came out a month ago, um, discusses in chapter 9, uh, which is all about modeling data, discusses the, the big ML uh, API, predictive API. And so it turns out there are actually a whole lot of predictive APIs, um, as I've learned today. And that's, that's um, well, that's fantastic. So, first things first, let's stay in touch, right? This is, I only get to stand here for 45 minutes, and there, there's, there's uh, so much more uh, that I want to talk to you about. And, and um, um, the book has a website, data science at commandline.com. Uh, also, if you have any questions or if you've written a, a great command line tool yourself, let me know uh, via email. Um, and I would also um, yeah, be very happy if you uh, provide me feedback or whatever. Or <clears throat> so, all right. So in the next uh, 40 minutes, I'm first going to give a, a motivation of why, why, why should we use the command line in the first place. Uh, then we're going to be walking through a, a use case where, b believe it or not, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be using the uh, BigML uh, API and the Bicing API. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. As we've just seen in the previous talk uh, by Manfred, um, demonstrating his, uh, his API tools. It's actually, you, you could say, oh man, there's, there's nothing new here, but actually I, I kind of like it because then that way you'll get to uh, uh, compare two different approaches. And of course, um, um, I would even say that APIs, API tools would be, uh, would be complementary in this case and not, a, not at all uh, one or the other, but we'll get to that. Um, and then a, a conclusion. So first, some motivation, uh, data science, uh, so to speak. The, um, um, if you take a step back from just looking at predicting uh, data science, I have here a very, a very practical definition uh, put forward by Hillary Mason and Chris Wiggins. And they say, data science is awesome, uh, which stands for obtaining data, uh, scrubbing, exploring, modeling, and also interpreting data. And I use this, this definition in my book. It's a very practical one. Uh, it's definitely not the only one. Um, and each chapter, except for the last one, or each step here, except for the last one, has its own chapter. Um, because when you get to uh, the interpretation part, I think that the, the computer, let alone the command line, is of little use. So, um, right, that's, that's data science. I mean, it's, it's presented here as a, as in a linear fashion, but of course, very often you'll find yourself doing multiple things at the same time or going back a, a step. So this is what the command line uh, looks like on, on Mac OS. Um, who here, who here has, has ever seen the command line on, on his or her computer? Yes, I should have asked that question from, from the start. Okay, and I'm going to assume that those who were uh, afraid to raise their hands that, um, or didn't raise their hands actually, you know, well, now you have. Now you've seen the command line, and we're going to be uh, using it a lot um, in this tutorial. 
And this, this is what it looks like on Ubuntu. Um, I'm not considering the Windows uh, command line or command prompt or, or PowerShell because that is just a, a completely different thing here. So the command line is awesome too. Um, because, first of all, it's, it's, it's agile. Right? It really allows you to play with your data because it has a, a so-called REPL, uh, a redevelop print loop, which you may recognize from, from R or, or IPython. Um, and that's just what you need uh, as a data scientist. You need to make uh, quick iterations uh, so that you can really, uh, yeah, be, so that you're really able to, to play with your data. Um, right, it's augmenting, augmenting, like I said, uh, it plays really, really well with uh, a lot of other uh, technologies. So whether you're uh, more, more um, you know, most comfortable with uh, IPython or R, um, uh, it doesn't matter. As, as long as you use an open format like CSV or JSON, you can really interchange uh, those technologies. So it's, it's scalable, uh, meaning that you, uh, well, as opposed to pointing and clicking, right? Um, scalable because you can create scripts or you can um, let your, your server do certain things at certain times. Um, extensible, it allows you to create new tools um, and it's uh, ubiquitous, right? If you if you log on to a remote server, uh, chances are that you're being presented with a with a command line. Um, uh, I once read that 95% of the supercomputers uh, run on Linux. So so if you ever get your hands on one of those, uh, better know your way around the command line, right? Um, right. So that's the command line. Um, I think. I guess throughout this, uh, the, the next demo, I'm going to uh, be demonstrating more also the, the underlying concepts um, of the command line. And I've been using the word command line tool now a couple of times already. And what I mean by that is actually a, a number of things. Uh, it could be a binary executable um, that is already installed, that comes with your, your distribution or it could be a, a shell built in like a CD to change uh, directories. Um, it can be an interpreted script. And this is interesting, just like the, the next two uh, shell functions and aliases, because those are the ones that you can really uh, quickly create yourself. Um, and that's, that's very important, uh, being able to create your own tools. Um, uh, growing your own data science toolbox is, is, uh, is what really allows you to become more productive. Um, as a data scientist. There's some concept that will become more clear as we uh, get to the demo is uh, how do you execute a command line tool? Uh, how do you combine them? How do you redirect input and output? Uh, work with files? And uh, how do you get help? Because uh, it, it is easy to get lost uh, when it comes to uh, what, which tool does what and what are, what are its uh, command line arguments. And there are over, yeah, there are a lot, but in my book I discuss more than 80 uh, command line tools. And that's, that's just a pain. They're a pain to install. Some, some are just an app get or a brew install away, but, but, but also some of them um, you need to compile from source. And if we were to uh, install all those tools right here, we would be spending the better part of a, uh, of a day for that. So because of that, I created a, a data science toolbox, a, a virtual machine for this book. If you're interested, uh, if you want to use it for uh, the heck night tonight, you can go to uh, data science at commandline.com and there you will find some, uh, some instructions on how to install it. It runs on top of uh, VirtualBox and Vagrant. So really allows you to get started straight away. But if you don't want to uh, uh, install the data science toolbox, but you still want to be using the command line, then I guess these four, and we're going to be using them also in the demo, these four are um, the most important uh, ones, I think. Um, and if you, if you wanna, wanna know how to install them, that's also on data science at the command line .com. There, there are instructions for all these 80 command line tools on how to install them individually, um, assuming that you're running Ubuntu. But if you're on Mac, uh, I'm, I'm sure that you, uh, you'll be able to figure it out as well. But if you're on Windows, and you don't have the command line, you can still install this data science toolbox, which is great, right? It 
everybody is in, invited to this party. Um, right, so th those were some of the basic concepts uh, of the command line, uh, why data science is awesome, why the command line is awesome. I guess now the time is, uh, is right to demonstrate this also to you, and I, I really hope that you'll be able to see this. All right, so I just logged in to the data science toolbox. Um, I cannot show a whole lot of characters here because I, I made the font a little bit bigger for you. Um, but here we are. We are in our, inside our data science toolbox. Does everybody see the dollar sign in the top left corner? Or at least some. All right. Because the lights, they have to stay on. And if you don't, uh, let me know and I, I'll just uh, um, scroll some back to, the, uh, to more down and we'll make it work. Okay, okay. So what are we going to do here? Um, we're going to obtain some data. We're going to scrub it. We're going to explore it. Uh, even modeling it. I mean, that's what this whole conference is about, about making predictions. Uh, for that, I'm going to be using the big ML API, but um, I'm not endorsing any API in particular. I just think that predictive APIs are, are, are amazing in general. It's just that I already had some experience with big ML, and, um, and it's also just for demonstration purposes, right? Um, I guess I could also have used uh, API tools uh, with this, but there was just too little time um, to, to hack that together. Uh, I did, if, if we have time, I, can also, I will also show you how I have connected the Twitter fire hose to the uh, uh, language prediction API of, um, sorry, the, the name is slipping me, Indico, yes, if there's time. Great. So, I'm going to use curl. Curl is like the Swiss army knife when it comes to downloading data from the internet. You see here this, this long URL. I think that actually redirects to the URL uh, that Manfred was using for his, open, um, for his API tools presentation. Um, I actually found this one when I googled uh, open data Barcelona. So I, I, I do believe that is, this is actually publicly available, but uh, who knows. Um, I'm using the, um, the dash s uh, uh, option here for curl to, to specify that curl shouldn't output any any um, uh, for for both information and the dash capital L uh, option here um, specifies that if if this URL gives back a, a HTTP redirect that it should follow that one. Uh, you can have that when you, for example, uh, a Bitly link or a t.co link, then you want to use uh, dash capital L. All right, so we got this, this XML file. You have already uh, seen it in the previous presentation uh, using a, a web interface, but we can also have a look at this. All right, that's a lot of data. I was using cat for that, but I guess it's better to use uh, less. I'll show that command in a second, but now we can, we can scroll through this data. We can see it's a lot of XML. I guess that comes with XML. It's always just a lot of data. Um, if you want big data, you just convert your, your data to XML. Um, all right, so that's XML. Here you can see down here I use uh, less so that I can uh, uh, scroll through uh, bikes.xml. All right, so that was easy. We already got some, uh, some data. Now... Let's, let's scrub it. Let's uh, shape it in such a way that um, we can visualize it or that we can pass it on to BigML. And the goal here is to convert it to, to CSV. CSV uh, stands for uh, comma or character separated uh, values. Um, and, 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 the, and the great thing about it is, is, is that it is also just plain text, really. Um, so you can, you can actually leverage a lot of the traditional command line tools here um, uh, on that. 
Although you do have to be careful when it comes to working with different fields. Anyway, let's, let's convert this data to, uh, to CSV, but I'm, gonna I'm first going to make a detour and convert it to, uh, to JSON because there's this really cool tool that I found out recently called JQ. And JQ is just amazing when you want to work with JSON data. Um, let me see here. So first I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to... So what we just did with curl, we saved the output of curl to a file called bikes.xml. And now I'm going to read in this data again and pass it on to XML to JSON, which, as its name implies, uh, converts XML to JSON. Um, and, and this is also a very new tool, right? I mean, the, most of these, um, the concepts that I'm presenting here are uh, 40 years old. Can you believe that? 40 years old to tackle problems that we're, we're facing today. Um, I think, I, th I still think that's amazing. And uh, I also think that the command line is going to be around for a, for a very long time. So it's, it's worth, uh, worthwhile to, um, to invest in this. All right. Uh, all right. So this is the output of XML to JSON, uh, piped through less so that we can, we can scroll uh, through it again. Um, so you can you can recognize that we have here. You see this cursor? Yeah. That we have here the, the latitude and the longitude and the street. So that's our data. That's great. Um, yeah. It's not very useful that I'm actually piping it through less because then you don't get a chance to uh, to have a look at the um, at the command. But we can pipe this into JQ, which is a really, like I said, a really great tool for uh, working with, with JSON data. So we saw some nestedness, right? And in order to get the, the relevant information, we're going to use a, uh, a particular uh, JQ um, expression here. Um, it's just, a, it has its own syntax um, in order to get the relevant uh, information. Um, you can see here now, this is now the data that we're working with. And we can, let me see here. So now that we have this, we use yet another tool um, called JSON to CSV. Like so. It's kind of, yeah, it's not, it's not too clean. That's just because of this, of how, how these conversions uh, go from XML to JSON. So basically, I'm creating a CSV file with this, with these two lines here. I'm creating a CSV file with uh, the latitude, longitude, and the number of slots, and the number of bikes. Let, let's have a look at this. Um, all right, doesn't have a doesn't have a header. So um, here I'm piping it through CSV look, which is part of CSV kit, which is a great pack, a, a great Python package that you can also use from the command line. Um, that really allow you to work with, uh, with the CSV data. So, is there a question? All right. Sorry. Don't want to don't don't scare you there. Um, oh, yeah, you saw that it, it didn't have a header, so let's add one using a, um, a custom command line tool I, I once wrote that uh, called header and store that into bikes-header.csv. Let's have a look. Yes, all right, so, so now we see that uh, our CSV file actually have a, has a header. So I guess this, this concludes the scrubbing step for now. We now have um, the data in, uh, in a format that we can work with. So first question that we can ask is, is how, many, how many bike stations um, do we have? So I can count the lines in this file. This is the file uh, excluding the header. Um, so 421 bike stations in Barcelona. It sounds like a lot, which is good. Um, WC stands for word count, and if you specify the dash L option, it actually doesn't count word, <laughs> but just lines. It's, um, I guess it's because these tools are all, they're all very, quite old. Um, which means you just have to get used to their, uh, their names as well. 
All right. All right. So, so, so. Who here um, works with R? You have some R people in the audience? You have some? Does that also include a ggplot? Yeah? Okay, okay. I am going to use R and ggplot from the command line. Like so. Um, of course, you can also use ggplot uh, in Python nowadays, thanks to y hat and uh, the port that they created. So, um, but so so it's a similar syntax, and because it's so concise, uh, it actually it's, it's really yeah uh, it really lends itself to uh, to be used from the command line. Is this still readable? So what I'm doing here. I'm sorry. Let me go down here. What I'm doing here is I'm, I have this bikes header CSV file, pass it into uh, a command line tool called Rio, which is, is actually a, a wrapper around R. It sets up a data frame and all, um, and in this case also a ggplot object. And then we just use um, a ggplot expression here. I'm going to draw some points based on um, the number of slots and the number of bikes in each. Um, uh, of each station. So this creates uh, a scatter plot. And because I am in a virtual machine, I need to go through an extra hoop in order to, uh, to view these, uh, these images. So what I've done is I, I'm actually, uh, I have a, a small web server just um, that allows me to view these images through the browser, right? If you would run these tools uh, natively, then you could just um, yeah, create a pop-up and immediately see the image. All right, so 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 that's that's a scatter plot um, created from the command line. And while I'm doing this, try to think about how you would do the same with uh, your favorite programming languages, right? Which which packages would you need to uh, to import, uh, and how many for loops would you have to write? Um, um, in order to accomplish this. I'm not saying that the command line is better at everything all the time. Just, you know, for, for your own, uh, for yourself, just to uh, get an understanding, like, is this something that I want to try out tonight or uh, later for my next um, uh, data science project, right? Okay. I actually... When I saw this image, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, number of bikes and the number of slots. Um, it turns out, as I, as I reason about this data, and that's why exploring data is so important, is that this is actually the number of slots available. I thought it was always the total number of slots in a bike station. So, um, So let's 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 solve this, right? Let's create a new a new column called capacity. I guess um, for lack of a better name. Um, using R again because I mean, hey, when you when you already know that, then um, uh, when you already know R, then why not leverage that? I could have done the same using SQL uh, from the command line. Um, Think, yes, I'm going to be showing that later as well. Meaning that again, try to be practical. Use use the tool that um, that gets the thing done, especially when you're hacking, right? When you're in hacking mode, uh, either tonight or at work, just use whatever gets the job done. All right, so now we can we can create the same scatter plot again, I guess. Which I have here, and I do a reload, and I guess. This makes more sense. I don't have time to go into this, but let me show you how to create a histogram. Just to demonstrate. Isn't everybody still? Yeah, I guess it's a, it's a little bit crowded on that screen here. It's not a whole lot of typing. I mean, if you're unfamiliar to the, the ggplot syntax, then it may it may seem a little bit weird. But if you already do, then I think this demonstrate that, um, demonstrates that, you can, that the command line can be really, uh, really effective sometimes, right? Especially when you're 
when you're trying to get to know your data. So, bikes, capacity, histogram.png. Let's see here. Oh, wait, I need to grow this screen again, sorry. Okay, here we have that file. All right, all right, that's the, that's the histogram. That's nice. Now I know my data set already a little bit better. What else? Um, we can compute the different the, the total number of capacity. Just we might be interested in that, and I'm going to show you three different ways how to do that. Let's first use a very um, well. Let's first use Rio again, just because you're, you've now seen it a couple of times. This is the total number of bikes. Um, if we assume that there are as many bikes as there are slots in those uh, stations, um, 10,000 bikes. That's 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 fantastic, actually. I hope that um, a lot more cities uh, will do this. And and tomorrow morning we're actually going to see uh, from the guys from QCIT, uh, we're going to see a whole lot more um, bikes and the cool things that you, uh, that you can do with those APIs. So that's R. Uh, I told you about SQL from the command line. Who here knows SQL? All right, all right. A bit more hands than, uh, than R. That's fantastic because also you can also leverage this from the command line. Um, this, is a, this, is a, this tool is also part of the CSV kit um, package. So it's just a, a pip install away. So here I'm just using, uh, under the hood it's SQLite, if you want to know. Uh, select some capacity as total capacity from standard in because I'm piping this data set. Um, yeah, it becomes the standard input for the CSV SQL tool. Right? And again, we see that we get the same answer, but a different way. Um, all right, some, something, something cool now. Um, I want to plot, we have, we have lot, latitude and longitude. I want to plot those on a map. Um, and we can do that using Rio because there's also a package called ggmap and it's indeed based on ggplot and it, it, it uses the, the Google Maps API. Again, another API here. And that's this. It's a little bit more typing here. Sorry, the output is a little bit verbose here. Let me highlight that. Can you nah. And you. So, require ggmap, create a, a qmap based on or zoomed in on Barcelona, and then for each bike station, create a point, right? Where it's uh, using the latitude and longitude, and the size of each point should be based on the capacity. And then I will also want to give it a color. Right, let's see if this works. So I do have to go a little bit fast. I, I, I uh, realize that, but I'm going to be around uh, tonight and, and tomorrow as well if you have any questions about this at all. And of course, if you don't want to bug me, you can always just buy my book. That was a joke. Right. Um, so here, we have a map. How's that? Isn't that cool? Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. I was hoping you would do that. All right. So again, this is not just some, some product, right? What I'm using here is, um, first of all, some tools are decades old. Some are, are built by um, uh, just, uh, yeah, um, individuals, right? Uh, they've made it open source, and they thought like, hey, I, 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 I've created a command line tool and, and others uh, might be uh, interested in using that. So, um, I'll show you later how you can also create your own tools really quickly. I have 50 minutes left. That's, that's awesome. So, that was exploring, right? We now have a feeling for our data set. Let's move on to modeling data. And for that, I want to use the big ML API and this week I just I, I checked out their latest version and saw that they had um, an anomaly detection in there and uh, since my, my PhD was on anomaly detection I thought yes that's awesome and um, 
Of course, in a PhD, you go very deep, right? You, you spend years and years looking at these algorithms. But now, because there's a predictive API, you can just, it's plug and play. And that definitely has its, uh, its benefits as well. So I'm going to show you how to, how to use it. I'm probably not using it in the most uh, optimal way. And it's also not just about this particular API, like I said. It's more about the workflow. Um, all right. I want to use just the latitude and longitude um, columns here because that's I'm going to I'm going to detect outliers uh, based on their geographical uh, location here. Using CSV cut, it's again part of CSV kit. I select just the latitude and longitude columns, and I'm going to store that into a new file called bikesletlong.csv. And I guess now we're ready to uh, to already use the um, the big ML API. So they have their own command line tool, specifically created for their own uh, API uh, called big ML ER. Also a pip install away. Um, and um, they have, there's a subcommand called anomaly and I'm passing in a training data set. The data set that we just created, just those latitude and longitudes. And I'm also going to use that as the test set. So for all those bike stations that we have, we're getting back an anomaly score, where one it indicates that it's a, an anomaly and zero is that it's uh, not an anomaly. Um, specify the, where the output should be and that I want a header. Okay, so this is gonna take just some time, I guess it's also because I'm in a, inside a virtual machine. Um, Yeah, and again, and again. So, combining here 40-year-old concepts with tools that are being uh, created as we speak, uh, it's still, I still find it very, very, very amazing. So let's hear. It, it uploaded, so what this command just is, is doing, it uploads a data set to their cloud, um, and it's now, I guess, uh, training a model and now it's computing. And I guess I should have specified the dash dash remote option. Um, that way it would also have generated these, uh, these scores in the cloud. But for demo, for, for presentation purpose, let's just stick with this. Um, it created uh, a subdirectory called BigML with our scores.csv. And that's great. That means that we now have, for each bike station, we have an anomaly score. I'm going to combine that with the, the, the data set that I had before uh, with all those columns. Let me show you how it now looks like. So I'm using less uh, again. You want to specify the dash capital S option if you don't want, to, don't want your lines to be wrapped. But that's a technicality, I guess. Um, so here we have our CSV um, data set, but now with a new column called anomaly score, right? It's, it was really easy um, if, if you know what commands to use. But anyway, let's plot these again. Let's uh, use Rio again, like we just did. But now using the color, just to, uh, just to show you how these scores look like and what they mean. Pretty fast, faster than this afternoon. All right, bikesanomalies.png. Oh, I used full screen again. That's not, uh, not very useful. No. All right, what does this mean? Um, anomaly score. It means that we now see the lighter color one, lighter blue ones, um, lie far away from other bike stations, right? I don't know if that's particularly useful. We can, of course, also do this detection because it's just in two dimensions. We can do this ourselves. But hey, uh, I guess that with uh, a little bit of imagination, you can now um, imagine 
uh, that uh, yeah, it's actually really easy to combine these, these different APIs uh, also with the command line. Of course, not just APIs, any command line tool. Um, so that was the first demo. I have some time left, which is, which is great, because I can then also show um, the, um, the one I created uh, this afternoon after I saw the Indico uh, presentation. I thought like, hey, it's, uh, it's free. I don't think there's a rate limit on their API. Um, at least I haven't found it yet. And I thought like, hey, uh, they have this language detector, and I have this other command line tool which uh, spits out uh, the Twitter fire hose. Let's connect those two, right? Let me see here. Let me first show you. Oh yeah, this, this is this is fun. If you guys now all tweet, either to um, either using uh, the hashtag Pappies2014, or you tweet to Pappies.io, right? Grab grab your phones. Oh, you already have it. Good. Um, tweet, and I'll I'll make them appear on the screen. And now we can detect the language. So do it in your native language. Um, I guess. Let me use this. Yeah, you don't see me typing, but I'm, I'm typing here. Um, all right, I'm using T, just the letter T. It's a command line tool to interface with Twitter. Um, I'm now streaming, and it's now showing uh, all the tweets that contain either pappies.io, the, the, the Twitter handle, or the, um, the hashtag Pappies2014. Hi, hi, Jeroen. You spelled my name wrong. How could you do that, Greg? <laughs> um, but anyway, you can see that it's working. So that's, that's one end, right? That's, again, obtaining data um, using one single command line tool. This is in CSV format. It's not very clear, but first we can see, we can see an ID, a timestamp, a username, or the, the, so the Twitter handle, and then the text, right? I can see, yes, all right. Hey, wow, we get, there's someone speaking Russian here. Okay, that's uh, great. At the same time as, I'm, as, I was, as I was printing this to the screen, I've been saving them to a file. Um, So yeah, you can you can stop now. I'm going to stop this process right now. <laughs> well, actually, I want to, and, and then no, you wait. What? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually gonna connect them to to Indico. Okay. So wait, you, you keep on tweeting. I guess uh, the, the tool can, um, picks that up. Uh, first, what I want to show you is a custom command line tool that I created. Um, the Indico API can be called, they, they have their own Python uh, bindings, and they can, you can also use it from, from just using curl, because it's a, it's a REST API. Um, but I wanted to leverage their, um, their Python bindings from the command line. So what I created is this, it's including everything, it's 16 lines, um, and this is Python. Who here then? I guess that, that must be all the other hands. Works in Python. Or he, every now and then. Yes? All right. So you recognize this. And this is not a lot of code, right? Um, I have installed their, their, uh, their Python package. So pip install indico.io. I import their language API. And then there is, um, in order to get the argument given to this tool, uh, I import uh, argv from sys. So I get the text. This is the text of the tweet I will be sending to this command line tool. This is actually where I am calling the API, and I get back um, a dictionary uh, of, of language probability pairs. Not using this code, it's, it might be a better way to do this, but I get, I get the top language with the highest probability, right? And then I print out just this language. Right? 
So this is, this is very powerful. This is, now, now I've created this, this building block, this command line tool this, that I can use uh, later in, in future projects or I can put it online for everybody else um, uh, to use as well. Um, so again, building up such a data science toolbox really makes you um, yeah, more productive and more efficient. And it allows you to, to actually leverage all the code that you have already written in, in, in Java, Go, uh, JavaScript, um, Python, R. You can all leverage that from the command line with just a couple of steps. Right, so, so this, this file is also executable um, so that we can actually use it uh, from the command line. Um, and that's about it for it to, to create such a tool. Of course, chapter, chapter four goes much uh, deeper into this. Um, but hey, let's, let's now go back to T, or the Twitter API, select just a text column, because it's, it's CSV, we want to extract just a text column. And then, using a wonderful command line tool called Parallel, I'm going to be um, um, using this, this, this uh, command line tool called indicolanguage.py. Uh, I'm going to be sending out 50 different requests at the same time and get back all those results. So that's GNU Parallel. It's, it's, it, it allows you to parallelize any ordinary command line tool across your, uh, your cores or even remote machines. So, yeah. that's this. That, this is all the code needed to hook up the Twitter stream um, and, and detect some languages from it. So, this first part here, up, up, uh, up until the pipe, which is, I haven't explained actually, but this is actually the operator to, to chain multiple command line tools together. To get the data, using CSV cut, we extract the appropriate column, and then we run a parallel, which is gonna, also going to output the tweet text, use 50 jobs um, in parallel, and then call the, uh, the indico language.py uh, command line tool, the file that you've just uh, seen. Fingers crossed. I hope that the demo gods um, are with me and we can get to see whether Indico language can detect <clears throat> the language of your tweets. Maybe it's waiting. It might be waiting uh, until those 50 requests are finished. And I don't even know whether we have 50 tweets. Let me try this. And if this doesn't work, I have a backup. Don't worry. So I guess in the meantime, let me continue to the conclusion. So three pieces of advice. Um, be patient. I mean, not just with API calls, but in general. I mean, this is, this is very different from what you might be used to, right? Um, so it takes time, but even I have been able to, to learn this, and so can you. Um, you don't have to use everything of, that the command line has to offer uh, at once. You can just swap out bits and pieces of your, your data science project um, uh, with the command line. Be creative. So um, create your own command line tools if you need to. Reuse others. Um, and also, yeah, it's, 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 it's a, a lot like, like programming, like solving these, these interesting puzzles. Um, because the command line does offer a lot of flexibility um, by chaining these tools. And again, be practical, right? If, there is a, if, if you need more flexibility that the command line can offer, Sure, use, use whatever uh, tool or programming language uh, you're most comfortable with. So I very often just move on to IPython Notebook uh, myself, or even just pen and paper, if that gets the job done. So again, let's stay in touch. Here's the website again, datascience.commandline.com if you want to learn more about the book. 
or its tools, uh, the virtual machine, you can just install it and, and uh, get, get started. Um, and then again, yeah, happy hacking. Thank you very much for listening. Let me go back. This is still hanging. I have, if I, if I may use one more minute of your time, I can actually, um, all right. I have, I have tweets here. These are tweets from the Twitter fire or a subsample of that. So not just the tweets you've been sending. I'm sorry. Um, Let's pipe this to the Indico language uh, command line tool because I do want to, I really want this to work. So this is not live anymore. I have stored the, all those tweets to an intermediate file. But you can imagine that this, that you can all chain this together, right? So here we see, wow, we see uh, Japanese, we see uh, Japanese, a lot of Japanese. Polish, yes, that's a Polish URL, I guess. No, I mean, the... Um, of course, as, uh, as Indico uh, has mentioned, of course, the, um, the performance increases uh, when, you, when you feed it more data. I mean, how can you determine a language based on just a URL? Um, but, again, thank you very much for listening, and uh, happy hacking. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doug. Brought to you by Form Systems, the leader in API and cloud gateway technology.